Okay guys, let's take a look at the next problem that we have on hand. So over here they're saying that a 50.6 gram sample of magnesium hydroxide reacts with 750 milliliters of a 1.23 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. Calculate the mass of magnesium chloride produced. So this is about as typical as a problem is going to get. I'm going to tell you right now that this is a limiting reagent stoichiometry problem. And this is one that you have to know. There has yet to be a semester in which this is asked, this has not been asked either in the midterm or on your final. So what I'm trying to tell you, there's like a 100% probability that this is going to show up somewhere. And we need to know how to solve it. So the first step of solving any stoichiometry problem is to come up with a balanced equation. This being said, it is absolutely imperative that you guys know how to go from names to formulas and formulas to names. There's absolutely no excuse not to know how to do that. And so it should be almost second nature for you guys to write the equation corresponding to this problem um, immediately. Magnesium hydroxide consists of these two ions, Mg2+, plus and the polyatomic hydroxide ion. Similarly, hydrochloric acid is one of the six strong acids that you should have memorized. It is HCl. So it is composed obviously of hydrogen and chlorine. And they are telling us over here that magnesium chloride is produced, but they don't need to tell us that. Okay, they need it for the sake of this problem, but they don't need to tell us that. You should know what reacting this guy and this guy is going to produce. You should know that a strong acid, strong acid with a strong base, always makes some sort of salt and then water. Now, even if they, even if you didn't know that, you should still know how to combine um, such reactions by applying a double displacement. Uh, procedure to this. Essentially, the positive ion of the first will combine with the negative ion of the second and vice versa. And these two will combine. So you should know what the products are going to be. It shouldn't be that challenging to you. Over here, our reaction is going to look like this. We have magnesium hydroxide. So the two is going to go down there. The one will come here. This is how you make the formula. Plus hydrochloric acid. And this is going to give us now the positive ion here will combine with the negative ion here, so the two will go to the chlorine and the one will come to the magnesium, giving us MgCl2 plus, of course, H and OH are going to make water. Now that we've come up with the correct equation, we need to balance it. We need to ensure that the elements on the left are equal to the number of elements on the right. Um, so if I have one magnesium here, one magnesium here, we're good. I have one chlorine here and two there, that's not good. And that problem can be solved by putting a two over here. Let's take a look at another element. We have two and two, four H's on the left hand side. We also need four H's on the right. Currently, I only have two of them. So I'll also put a two over here and this should get the job done. We have one magnesium, two oxygens, four hydrogens and two chlorines on both sides. We're good to go. The next step of the process is to take a look at the information given to us in the problem. Over here, they are telling us a couple of things. Number one, we have 50.6 grams of magnesium hydroxide. Furthermore, we have 750 milliliters or 0.75 liters of a 1.23 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. This is where you have to stop and all kinds of bells need to go off in your head because this is how you know that we have a limiting reagent problem. In this problem, we are given information about more than one reactant. The minute you have information, about more than one reactant, it is a stoichiometry problem. This is how you diagnose this type of a problem. And in, uh, sorry, this is how you have a limiting reagent stoichiometry problem, okay? If you are given information about more than one reactant, 
This is a limiting reagent stoichiometry problem, and our next step automatically becomes to figure out which one of these guys is limiting, because that is the guy you're going to use to solve the rest of the problem. So <clears throat> to figure out which one is limiting, I'm gonna show you guys a nice little trick in a minute, but before we do that, the first step of the process, no matter what technique you use, is to find the number of moles of each reactant. So let's get that done first. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to convert you know, grams to moles, and that is done through first finding the molar mass, and we don't want to waste time on that, so I've already found the molar mass of some of the things that we're going to need. Um, magnesium hydroxide, for instance, has a molar mass of 58.32 grams per mole. Hydrochloric acid is 36.46. We may or may not need magnesium chloride if we do that. If we do need it, um, we'll figure it out in a minute. So this being said, let's find the number of moles of MgOH2. So we're going to start with the 50.6 grams given. And we're going to multiply this by something that, you know, eliminates the grams. So grams on the bottom, moles on top. So one mole of magnesium hydroxide contains 58.32 grams. Of course, our grams are going to cancel out. And we can do this in our calculator to figure out what the value is going to be. So the value over here is going to be 0 0.868, approximately, moles. Next, we need to find the moles of our second reactant, or in this case, HCl. To do this, since we are not given grams, we do not need this molar mass. Rather, understand that we're given a molarity. So molarity has units of moles per liter, and multiplying that by the number of liters we contain, uh, we have, we're given, we can quickly find the number of moles. So what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna take 0 0.750 liters, and we're gonna multiply this by the given molar molarity, 1.23, moles per liter. Working this out, is going to give us 0 0.9225 moles. So now that we found the number of moles of each one of our reactants, we are in a position to figure out which one is limiting. Now you may have learned many different types of techniques to figure out which one is limiting. Here is perhaps the easiest one. All you need to do is divide each one of these two quantities by their stoichiometric coefficients. So I will divide this guy by the number in front here, or just one. Obviously, dividing this guy by one gives us the same answer, so 0 0.868, let's say. And the second one, I'm gonna divide by its stoichio, stoichiometric, the stoichiometric coefficient, in this case two. And if I calculate that, I'm gonna get 0 0.46125. And here's the big trick, guys. The smaller number represents the limiting reagent. So whichever number is smaller corresponds to your limiting reactant. It is that easy. You don't have to go any further. This works every single time. Once you have the number of moles of each one of your two reactants, you simply divide each one by their corresponding stoichiometric coefficient. And whichever number is smaller is going to be your limiting reagent. In our case, it is hydrochloric acid. And we're gonna use that value, we're gonna start our problem using that value right there, 0 0.9225 moles. This particular question is asking us how much of magnesium chloride is produced. In order to figure that out, we have one more line to write out. So we're gonna start, of course, with the number of moles of our limiting 
reactant Once we have the number of moles of HCl, we can use our equation to go from where we are to where we want to go. We are currently over here and we want to go over here. Our balanced equation gives us a mole ratio which we will now use. We know that two of these make one of those. And so 0.9225 of these are going to make how many of those? So you're going to apply that ratio next. Now, even if you didn't understand what I just finished saying, we can use, you can think about this in terms of a dimensional analysis problem. We have moles of HCl here, and we want to get rid of those. So obviously, we're going to put moles of HCl here, right? If we want to get rid of those, we're going to write moles of HCl here, because that'll cancel this. And we're going to go and we're going to write what we need up here, which is moles of MgCl2. And we know from our equation that two of these guys make one of those. So the minute we finish this calculation, the moles of HCl are going to cancel. And we will be left with moles of magnesium chloride. Now, if we want mass of magnesium chloride, that should be a standard problem for every one of you guys. We're going to use the molar mass to get the job done. Once again, if you want to think about this in terms of um, a dimensional analysis problem, let's calculate the molar mass of this first. We have magnesium, which is 24.3, plus two chlorines, which are 35.45. Gives us 95.2 grams. Now, I'm not going to put the grams on the bottom. I'm going to write them on top. I'm going to write 95.2 grams of MgCl2 per one mole of MgCl2. And you can see that the moles of MgCl2 will cancel at this stage, and we will have solved our problem because all that is left now are grams of magnesium chloride. So working this out, we get a final answer of 43 0.911 grams. Of course, we should now go ahead and make sure that our significant figures are all intact. In the problem itself, we're given three sig figs here, three sig figs here, and three sig figs here. Um, unless we've added or subtracted somewhere, um, our answer should also contain three sig figs. Now, when I say adding and subtracting, molar masses don't count. You always write more sig figs than necessary, as you can see that I have done over here. So it seems to me that in this problem, we have to make sure that we write our answer using three significant figures. So our final answer over here is 43.9 grams of magnesium chloride are produced. Hopefully, you were able to take away this big trick of quickly figuring out which one is your limiting reactant. And once again, to diagnose the problem, anytime you're given information about more than one reactant, this is automatically a limiting reactant stoichiometry problem. Hopefully that was helpful and you understood the concept. Practice a couple of these problems and you're going to be fine.